Check one, two, one, two. Can you hear me, Shane? Now nah, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Let's talk about
Check one, two, one, two. Shane, can you hear me down the trail? Check one, two, one, two. Excellent, I can hear you. All right, thank you. All
gentlemen at the East Link Center. Are you guys ready for some NBL basketball? Are you guys ready for some storm basketball? The Moncton Miracles in town to take on our island storm. Here's what I got in store for you tonight. We got a chance to uh, see some uh, great entertainment during halftime. We'll tell you a little bit more about uh, that, including the storm chasers. We're going to do bomb for books. Somebody's going to get hooked up, hopefully, with 100 bucks to use at the bookstore at UPEI or Holland College. And we'll also have the Cowby Bryant Challenge. We want to hear you loud tonight when they are hitting shots. We want to hear you get louder. Are you ready to go, East Link Center? I said, are you ready to go, East Link Center? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd ask you to please stand and join in the singing of our national anthem by Storm Chaser Brianna Simpson. Storm Chaser, Brianna Simpson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Storm Chasers dance team, presented by Dance Virtuosa and choreographed by Kashina Bartlett. Massachusetts, 6'9", power forward. Check 
seven, shooting forward, number 15, Ed Jones. From Houston, Texas, out of Texas Tech University, a 6-1 guard, number 21, Nick O'Pore. From Mississauga, Ontario. Out of Arizona State University, a 6'3 shooting guard, number 23, number 13, and Twee Atani. And from Lexington, Kentucky, out of Miami of Ohio, a 6'5 shooting forward, number 5, Antonio Ballard. The head coach of the Highland Storm in his third season, Joe Salerno. Assistant coach Mike Leslie. The team manager is Eric Labor. Head trainer Ralph Manning. The assistant trainer Laura McCluskey. And strength coach Dave and Eli McCaffrey. Your starters for your Island Storm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our ceremonial tip today, please welcome two cancer survivors. Please welcome Philip Ward and Autumn Newell. Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremonial tip is brought to you by the Guardian Newspapers and delivering the Guardian Game Ball, Guardian Carrier, Here's Cole Perry. survivors Philip Ward and Autumn Newell for their part in our ceremonial tip brought to you by the Guardian Newspapers. Today's officials are Al King, Trevor Perry, and Matt Boyle. And now, Storm fans, it's time for Storm Basketball. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Basketball here at East Link Center in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. I'm Brett Poirier, and we have the Island Storm and Moncton Miracles going head-to-head -head again. These two teams have been a long-standing battle now, three years in the making. The Miracles have had the advantage in the season series, especially in Moncton, where they've gone 3-0. Now the Storm are looking for revenge, but they're going to have to do it without star point guard Al Stewart who suffered a knee injury in Friday's game against the Mill Rats. He goes for an MRI on Monday. Now, he will be joining us later in the show, sometime in the second quarter, so make sure you stick around for that. Here at Eastling Center, about 1,500 fans have filed in for this Sunday matinee. Like I said, these two teams have gone head-to-head, -head, and the last time they played, Moncton did have the upper hand. That was in Moncton at the Coliseum. Replacing Stewart in the starting lineup, here's Antwi athen Hade, and he misses his first attempt. And already about the check-in, you see Adrian Moss coming to the scorer's table. For Moncton, you have Oliver McNally, former Storm player for a few weeks earlier in the season, spent the preseason stint with the Storm, was released, and now he's with the Miracles. Posting up down low, that's Webster. He turns it over, Ballard gets it, and now O'Curry runs up court. Curry kicks it off to Antwi. He's fouled and won. Miracle 
Jericho starting lineup looks like McNally, Brandon Webster, Johnny Main, Stanley Robinson, and Jermaine Daly gets the start. Here we see Adrian Moss checking in. Very strange substitution, only about a minute into this one after Antoine just hit an N1 play. I'm not exactly sure what that was about. But starters for the Storm was Antoine, Ed Jones, Antonio Ballard, Steve Changang, and Nickel Corey. Now here comes Moss running up court. Screens coming from Ballard. Ballard rolls down. O'Curry tries his hand at a three, and that's no good. Early on in this one, 3-2 is the score. Two minutes into the first quarter here. Here's Robinson. Now McNally cuts in. That's no good. The left-handed lay-in couldn't go for him. And now Robinson. And that one does fall. Moss up top now. Two ballers. Mismatch here. Much smaller. McNally was guarding him, but the help defense. Excellent job by Webster getting a hand on that ball. And you can follow this game along with me on Twitter at Brett Poe, at Brett NBA, or you can follow Storm on Twitter. It's at Island Pro Ball. With the inbound up top to O'Corey, he tries his hand at another three, and that one does fall. Like to see a hot start from O'Corey. He had a big game on Friday, really propelled them to a win. And that was a huge win over St. John. Just the day before that, on Thursday, the Storm lost in St. John at Harbor Station. So a great rebound for them. That was six on the shot clock. Moncton's forced to do something up top. And a near foul, trying to draw the foul, was Brandon Webster trying to get Changing in the air. Webster, six foot eleven. Changing six foot nine. That's the center matchup this afternoon. And trying to get it down low, Chang Yang, it went off of the foot. Surprisingly, no football call, though. An official must have saw it hit off a of knee, and it's going to be Moncton Ball. Johnny Main and McNally, who's taking control of the point guard duties for Moncton. Of course, we all remember him being a former Moncton miracle, and he gave the Storm headaches, especially last year, earlier on in the season, when Moncton was one of the hottest teams in the league. I remember him very well coming in, torching this team at Credit Union Place. Now driving inside again. There's Robinson. His shot's off the mark. Ballard with the board. And Moss up court to O'Curry. The alley-oop finger. What a play. O'Curry, as you can see, just barely gets a right hand on it and just enough time to scoop it in. Now at the other end, underneath McNally, and one play, and it's going to be Robinson who's going to get credited with the bucket. Pardon me. They're going to wave that one off, actually. Nice cut underneath from Moss straight to Ballard. You can see chemistry starting the build between the two. Moss brought in about a month ago. Ballard's been with the team for two years now. And Moss, he's really solidified his role as one of the leaders at that position. Obviously, it was stored out. He's going to have to step up his play. And underneath, in a crowd, and he gets it to go. That was Webster. Webster is such a big body. The Storm, we're going to have trouble with that all night. You have to think Phil Jones, six foot eleven player for the Storm. Oh, and there's another find. That time to Changang from Moss. I have to think the Storm are going to have to fight fire with fire, bringing in a bigger center. Changing obviously 6'9", but you have Phil Jones, who is 6'11", on the bench, and he's a strong guy. You might have to look to bring him in early on to deal with Webster. Turnover there from Moncton. Scores 12-6 to early on in this one, 7 minutes, 35 seconds to go. Oh, Curry, he... Pardon me, that's Jones. He thought about the three. Now he's going to pull into that one. He hits it. And how about Ed Jones? Brought in a, a little over a week ago when Samaj Ng was released. And he's been playing lights out ever since arriving. 
Now McNally, he picks up his dribble, hands it off, trying to get it to Webster again. He couldn't control it. And they're going to say Chang Yang fouled him on the catch. Webster, tough to contain. Storm did have a player who would be great at this right now, uh, Antoine Tisby, who left the team about a month ago. He was always that big force, big body, strong guy, and he's able to contain guys down low. And a confusion at midcourt right now, and they're going to wave that. Oh, they're going to count that one, actually. They're going to say a block and foul. And there's a miracle player down on the court right now, Hobble, and that's Johnny Main. That would be a huge, huge knock for the Miracles. He's their lead in score. And it looks like his ankle's a little sore at midcourt. He's walking to the Miracles bench right now. Looks like he's able to walk it off, though. He'll probably take a few minutes off, and hopefully he'll be able to return. At the line for the three-point play, and it goes. 59 is the score. Here's Moss handed off to Jones. He just hit a three out there a minute ago. Moss is wide open, but Chang Yang goes in instead, and he hits it. Here's McNally. He finds Robinson in the corner. He was double teamed. He dribbles out of it, and they're going to say it dribbled off of his foot. It will be Storm basketball. Have to like the start if you're a Storm fan. Up 17 to 9 right now, and they're not showing any signs of fatigue after playing three games in four days. Another three coming. Not that time. That was O'Curry off the mark. Alex Darosh. New Brunswick native checking in. And another turnover for the Miracles. Very rusty start for them. We'll have to look to see if they can bounce back somehow. Still in six minutes into this game, but they've already allowed the Storm to score 17 points. And that was an issue for the Mill Rats in the first quarter on Friday, allowing their opponent, which was the Storm, to score 40 in just the first quarter alone. That was contained a bit in the second quarter where they were able to regain themselves. At one point, take the lead in the game. Now here's Moss with seven, kicks it to Ballard. And he's double teamed, and he's going to step back, take that jumper, and he hits it. And Tony McNally, he's dribbling around up top, and he gets it down to Webster. And Webster, he travels with it. Another turnover. And Moncton's yet to call a timeout. And that's going to do it for a timeout right now. We'll be right back.
before we go on to the first time out in the first quarter at Eastling Center. I'm Brett Porte for this matinee game between the Storm and the Miracles. Screen set by Ballard up top. He thought about the three. He's going to drive instead. Kick is out. And now Moss has it up top. The screen coming from Changang. He's in traffic. Stepping back over McNally. No good. That's going to be a, an out of bounds call. Moncton will have it. Nick O'Corey leading the way for the Storm with five points here in the early going. Here's Webster. He's done well for the Miracles so far. He has four. And now checking in, as I suspected, this will be Phil Jones, six foot eleven, recently acquired by the Storm. And he's going to match up nicely with Webster. Van Sant also checking in. Van Sant, what a performance from him as the ball goes out of bounds. We saw him hit five of five from beyond the arc on Friday. Now the turnaround shot. No good in traffic for Moncton. Moss will take it up court. He hands it to Ballard who gets underneath. What a pretty shot and he gets it. How fluid is that? In transition, he had two guys on him. He was able to scoop by one one defender, and then he was able to jump, leave his feet, and there's going to be an N1 play. Or maybe not. They're going to count the basket. As you can see, Ballard, the hang time on him, to be able to curve around the defender, switch hands, all in the air. Just incredible. Right now, the Storm's in at 12 and 13 on the season. The Miracles are behind them in the stands at 9 and 17. They started off quite poorly along with the Raymond, but both teams starting to pick up their play a little bit. And obviously, the Miracles want that Storm spot in the playoffs. Storm currently at second in the Atlantic. And a screen's coming here. Ballard up top. He pumped fakes. They're going to say he traveled. Ballard trying to get the paint where he's done well. The Storm leading the way with 12 points in the paint. Moncton has eight right now. And points off turnover. That's just been the deadly killer so far early on. Moncton obviously a little bit rusty, but they've allowed the Storm to get eight points off of their miscues. And here's another one. Can the Storm capitalize this time? Jones, he spots up for three, and it goes. 24 to 12 is now the score with two minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. McNally, he gets hit, and it's going to be continuation. Count the bucket. McNally now has three points, his first bucket of the game. He has an assist and a board to go with that, and Dwayne Smith will check in for the storm. And just a reminder, pretty soon Al Stewart will be joining us here on the broadcast. Stewart went down in the third quarter, I believe it was, on Friday's game against the Mill Rats. So it'll be good to hear from him. We'll give an injury update. You'll hear it from himself rather than myself trying to explain what happened to him. So uh, first-hand account from Stewart. So I want to thank Al right now for coming up and uh, talking to him before the game. He's definitely he's upset. He wanted to be out there so bad. Of course, he's, that's the type of player he is. He's so competitive. He's never had an injury like this. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what his thoughts are. Antoine check back into the game. And McNally, who hasn't came out of this game so far. Moncton's really gone with him as their leader in this one. Van Zant off the mark and a fight for the loose board. And it'd be Smith who comes down with it. He finds Jones, who spots up, and his jumper's off the mark. I was watching Jones in warm-up. He is able to hit those from that range, about the 15-foot mid-range jumper. Beyond that, I don't know if he can. And McNally tries a three. The long bomb is no good. Van Zant up court to Antwi. And driving down low, McNally falls to the ground, and Jones again, he hits that one. That's Ed Jones. 
Ed Jones, absolutely phenomenal play. He had 18 points in 29 minutes of action on Friday night. And it's only his fifth game in the Storm uniform. Now driving down low, here's Robinson. His shot bounces around, but not that time. And the Storm up by 12, and they're pushing again. Nice find to Jones. Can he hit it again? He's not going to try that time. Now Moncton's getting smart. They're closing on him. Phil Jones, he's in traffic, and he traveled. Lathan checked into the game. Now here's George. Underneath, good to see Johnny Main checking back in. He missed that, but underneath, that was Lathan cleaning up the miss. Ten point lead for the Storm, 27 17. And the Storm have really had their way on offense right now. A near turnover, and it is a turnover. Moncton in their hand on the loose ball. Lathan, he's going to take it in. Almost loses the handle on it. Gets it up. And the scoop shot, no good for George that time. Van Sant. Here's wide open to Ed Jones again. Not that time. Travis George, he'll run into this play. Tying his shoes on the backcourt. And Lathan has 12 seconds on the clock. He's triple teamed right now. He finds it off. Driving down low. A hard take to the basket. Alex Derosh and the dunk goes. That time, Sylvania Watkins gets it. Watkins, one of the best rebounders in the league. Pretty much held the title of league rebounder the entire year last year for Moncton. He and Antonio Ballard always go head-to-head -head in that category. Now here's Antoine. He takes it hard. Good take from him, and he's going to go to the line for two. Jeremy Williams checking in. Williams, he's been playing phenomenal of late. Not many minutes early on in this one, though. Williams, really a nice role player. He had 13 points in just 14 minutes, so he's so efficient in his time on the court. That was on Friday's Friday night's game. There's Lathan underneath, and a rejection from behind. Smith got his hands on the shot of George, and now the Storm running up court, trying to alley-oop it to Williams. Not that time. Here's Lathan now with eight seconds left. He's going to dribble it out, get the last shot for the Miracles. His team down by nine, and that's no good. The Storm can hurry with two seconds left. They're going to fire it. It's after the whistle anyway. No good, and that's going to do it for the first quarter. 28-19 to 19 is the score. Your Island Storm, 28. Ladies and gentlemen, the Island Storm is committed to contributing back to the community in each game. Arsenal, Best Cameron, Ellis, Chartered Accountants, and the Storm donate 100 tickets Profit organizations to resell 100% of the money's kept from the selling organization. Tonight's nonprofit group is the Canadian Cancer Society PEI Division. Patrick, we're ready to bomb for books here. $100 to use the Holland College bookstore. What are you taking at Holland College? There you go. That was a nice warm up for a half court shot. Make the shot. 100 bucks to the bookstore. Let's cheer on Trevor Eastling Center. Shot one. It's up, a little short. That's a good warm-up. Nothing wrong with that. You still got two more. Trevor with shot two. 
Different technique, a little much. Just a warning, we're not paying for your medical bill or my own medical bills. Shot three, Trevor. 100 bucks to Holly College Bookstore. Heads up. Half court, it's up, it's... Oh, so close. Man, you're not going away empty-handed. We got 25 bucks, okay? 25 bucks to Holly College Bookstore. One more time, Holly College student Trevor. Let's hear it, East Link Center. All right, Storm fans, don't forget we're having a tuning toss coming up at halftime. And you can buy your tuning from the Canadian Cancer Society PTI Division. They're selling them down here on the floor, and they're located in the bar area on the north end. Canadian Cancer Society wants to stop cancer before it starts. Do you know that about half of all cancers can be prevented? You can reduce your risk of getting cancer by quitting smoking, being active, eating well, and maintaining a healthy body. It's also important to get screened for cervical breast and colon cancers. Back here in the second quarter, we have Al Stord joining us momentarily. And the Storm find themselves up by 9, 28 to 19. A pretty good offensive quarter for them. Defensively, too, they held their opponent to only 19, so you can't complain about that. Moncton, they did start off rusty, and another turnover there. Turnovers were the main cause of concern. Led to 11 points off turnovers, and the Miracles have zero points off turnovers. Now here's Dwayne Smith. His shot's no good. Flying in for the rebound. Jeremy Williams gets his hands on it. Antwi, he's setting up a play right now. He has 17 on the clock. Looks like he was going to take it, and he picks up his dribble, and he finds the cut in Smith. But another turnover there. And there with a the scoop shot. That goes for Moncton. Now a seven-point game. Moncton traveled this morning to arrive here on the island. So you'll have to wonder if fatigue, maybe a little bit of rust, might have something to do with it. About a two-hour drive from Moncton to Charlottetown. That shot off the mark for Smith. Van Zant, nice pass down low to Changang, and a bullet pass right in to Williams, who turns around and shoots. No good, but another offensive rebound goes to Smith, and he scores. Here's Lathan. He had to pick up his dribble. Gets it to Darash, and now Lathan has it up top again. With the long bong stepping back. No good. That was an air ball. Fighting for the loose ball. Someone does get it. It is Moncton. Stanley Robinson will go to the line. 4-2. Pardon me. Travis George will step to the line. Here's George at the line. Okori checked in along with, pardon me, just Okori checked in for the storm. Sean Vanson will step out. A little off the mark this time. He tried 1-3, 0 of 1, no points. He did have a rebound. Right now leading away for the storm, it's Ed Jones who has 9, 3 of 4 from beyond the arc. And that dunk was off the mark by Williams. Here's Changang to Antwi. Now back to Changang. He's turning around. Finds Smith. Oh, Curry up top with 17 on the shot clock. His dribble nearly intercepted and double teams. Gets out of that. Wide open in the corner. It is Williams. He hits it. And here we have Al Stewart who just stepped into the booth. We'll just hook him up with the mic and he should be good to go. Al, thank you for coming up here and uh, joining us today. Uh, definitely not the way you want to be watching this game, but what are your thoughts on the whole injury process? And can you explain to everyone what's going on? 
With you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, I have, they have my total support. Absolutely. So, uh, what what type of timetable and, and what can fans expect for you t for your arrival now? Um, it's kind of day to day right now. Um, I go to the doctor yeah. tomorrow. And there you can look at the fans right there. You, oh, you just missed your camera shot. Oh, I'm sorry. I go to the doctor oh, tomorrow. I get an yeah. MRI. Okay, so you go to. No, you got your one time shot, and, and we we blew it. Oh man, I missed. But thank you guys for doing that. We at least I got on camera because you were here. Oh, okay. I'm glad to be. It's pretty cool up here too. It's a good view, isn't it? I <laughs> know. I think I like this view. Oh yeah, it's great. Now Smith with the rebound, and the Storm right now they're on top by ten. And uh, we were talking earlier before the game, bringing in a lot of point guards. And uh, at one point, we weren't sure how that was going to work. But with you going out and you play the majority of the minutes at the point guard position, being the starter, uh, what do you what do you think about the point guard situation now? As a Curry tries a three and hits it, it's going to be a two, actually. I, I think it's good. I mean, you know, um, Antweet is, you know, a very heady point guard, you know, a veteran as well as myself. Adrian learned a lot from us. He's a good point guard as well. Um, Sean Van Zandt, he's a point guard scorer as well, too. Yep. I think we're pretty strong with the position. And, you know, at first when it happened, I was like, oh, we got too many point guards. But, yeah, <laughs> it all worked out in the end, though, for me being out for a few, you know, four weeks maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And the whole time uh, through this injury process, you got uh, you got hurt on Friday. And w what was that? Like, you, you told me that you never felt an injury like that before. So what was your thought process when it happened? Um, I didn't know what to think. Like, I, like you said, I, I never been injured, so I didn't know what to expect. You know, I've I've had a few sprained fingers or, you know, ankle little things like that. You can bounce back from. But yeah. when I heard it, and I felt um the pop a little bit, I felt like you know, I just know what to expect. Like I said, uh, I mean, it, it, it's just terrifying to me right now because I never been in this position and able to miss a game like this. You know, so I'm just gonna wait and see when I go to the doctor tomorrow and see what the, the outcome will be. Hopefully, it's good news though. Absolutely, and uh, right now you're you're hoping for a sprain rather than a tear. And uh, what would a sprain mean, and what would a tear mean? Um, with a sprain, you know, I can I can rehab that pretty fast and be back, you know, within three weeks maybe. Um, with the, with the proper treatment from Ralph, he's he's a, he's a he's a good he's a good um he's a good trainer. He's a real good trainer. You know, he he been on me since 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 the day it happened. Um, if it's if it's torn, um, that's it won't be good news. I mean, I'm at, I may have to have surgery. Yep. And I may be done for the entire season. So I'm, I'm praying, you know, all so, my yeah, family So, yeah, fingers praying. crossed here in Charlottetown yeah. and across the island, as many people have probably came to you and wished you the best uh, as uh, just talking to you before the game. Three or four people in a few minutes span came over to talk to Al, to wish him well. And uh, everyone, what a dunk there. Right now the Miracles climbing back a little bit, down by 10, 35, 25, halfway through this second quarter here in Charlottetown. And uh, talk about the the matinee effect. Now we're playing a 2 p.m. game. What's that like on your body? Do you prefer to play uh, do you, the evening games or the two o'clock games? Um, you know, with me, it doesn't really matter. You know, some players like to play an evening game. Yeah. But um, I, I'm also like I'm the player. Like, I'm ready to just get it going. Absolutely. Steve I'm, Chang I'm, underneath. I'm, I'm ready to get it going. So. Uh, you know, I'm from Chicago. We used to play at 8 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm pretty excited about every game, you know? Absolutely. And now, what about some of your new guys? Ed Jones coming in, hitting three big threes. He was excellent. 18 points, I believe, was his total from Friday night. And then you have uh, Adrian Moss, Antwi, like you said, Nico Corey. What do you think of the new additions to your roster? Man, I, I think it's wonderful. You know, like like some of the players just named, like, you know, we, we we, we have a, a great bunch of group of guys, you know, with Ed, you know, the, a flat-out scorer, yep. three-point shooter, which is something we need to lead, lose a great plumber. Yeah. So, I mean, then, then, and then with Nick O'Quarrie with the scoring machine he is, you know, it's, it's great addition. It's great addition. We don't, we don't lack any, anywhere around the court. So, I mean, the pickups we have right now, it's, 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 it's one of his one to see, to see the Meyer with us. Absolutely. Now, talk a little bit about your, uh, about your MVP candidate, Ant Antonio Ballard. Everyone... The high, highest praise around the league. Everyone just—he's such a workhorse. What are you, what are your thoughts on this great guy? Man, Tony, yo, he 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 he's like my best friend off the court and on the court as well. But I mean, we talk a lot, we hang out a lot as well. Um, he's my MVP. He's my MVP hands down overall. You know, he's he do so much for the team. You know, he, he's the type of player you don't even have to have a play for. He just go out and get his twenty and ten Absolutely. every game. You know, we feel like he can just get every rebound, he can score every bucket, and, and his his heart is just is just unbelievable. Yeah, he's a he's quite the competitor as you are too. I mean, we were we were saying that you never really missed significant time injury, 
injury aside, but just uh, just watching the game from the bench and from up here, uh, what's it like to you not to be able to out there playing, helping your guys? Um, it, it, it's it's kind of distracting for me, you know. I mean, I, of course I want to share my team, you know, in, in, until the end. But watching and not being able to play is the worst. I've never had to do this before in my life. So like I said, it's the first <laughs> injury. So I mean, it's kind of tough. It's, it's kind of tough being able to watch. Yeah. All right, now uh, we only have you for a few more minutes, but what do you say we try out your broadcasting skills? Um, I, I like it. You know, I, 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 th I think this may be something I'm looking to when I'm back. Do you, you think so? Day. All right, so Al's going to be with us for a few minutes after the timeout, so uh, stick around and we'll be right back. Ready to go with the Calvi Bryant Challenge, East League Center. Please welcome our first contestant, Silas. Going against head-to-head. -head. Please welcome Ron Wynn as well for the Calvi Bryant Challenge. I'm going to send you down to that end, Silas. And, Brown, we're going to get you to go down to this end down here. And we'll explain how things are going to go. Come on down here. So first thing that we're going to do is race to center court and throw on a hat, throw on a nightgown, and then throw on a basketball. Come on down here. Pick up the basketball and go for a shot. Silas, are you ready? Three, two, one. Let's start the Calvi Bryant Challenge. Throw on the nightgown first. That's the easiest. Throw on the nightgown first. Yeah. Up over the head. So far, neck and neck. Cheer it on, East Lake Center. You guys are going for Silas over here, okay? Over here. Let's hear for Bronwyn. Throw on the hat next. Yep. They, yeah, you're good to go. Throw on the hat. Silas going for the shot. First shot for 25 bucks. The cows. Yes. Go for it. First one's going to score. Shot for shot right now for 25 bucks. The cows. Silas, congratulations. You scored yourself 25 bucks. The cows. Ice cream. High five. High five as well. Thanks so much for playing. Once again, let's hear for both our contestants with the Calvi Bryant Challenge East Lake Center. Back here in the second quarter, I'm joined by Al Stewart, and his team is up right now by 9, 36, 27. Four minutes, 30 seconds to go. Pardon me, five minutes, 30 seconds to go in the second quarter. Here's Steve Changeng. He's driving through the lane. He's fouled. He'll go through the line for two. All right, Al, what was your analysis on that play? Steve is a versatile player. I mean, Steve can put on the floor. He can shoot it. I think Steve has a point guard mentality, but he's just only 16, 16 though. So we've been practice, you know, driven a little bit. He think he can uh, he can handle the ball better than me. <laughs> That's so. But I thought the play was real good. Steve can up fake, you know, he can shoot the three. So they have to they have to respect that. Yeah, you know what? We see him actually taking threes in warm up, and he hits another about a forty percent clip in warm up. So uh, we've seen him step back in a few games. And just like you, uh, you're not known as a three point shooter, but. Uh, what, what actually, what goes through your head when you're about to take a three? Because that's not your game. You're kind of like a Rage on Rondo type player. Mm -hmm. But uh, what actually triggers your thought to take a three in a game? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not a three-point shooter. I'm, I've always been a type of guy that penetrates with the ball on the floor yep. and create. But, I mean, I can shoot the three. I can. Like, my confidence, I've always been there. It's just, I feel like that's just settling for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I never want to settle. Like, you know, a lot of guys may try to intimidate you. You can't shoot. Absolutely. I can. But, you know, I, I, I never let it get to me. I feel like I can get to the basket anytime I want to. So so that, that, that that's, what I, that's what I love doing. Here's Lathan right now. He's guarded by Antoine in the backcourt. A little stumble there. They finally get to pass the timeline, 38-27. Storm still on top, and offense has been the main servant for the Storm. 40 first quarter points against St. John on Friday night. And offensively, you guys are clicking, aren't you? He nodded his head. That was a yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was all in the game. Uh, yeah, yes, he, we are. We are. We're yeah. pretty well right now. See, Al's all about the play. Right now, he's running these plays in his head. Obviously, being the floor general on this team, he knows exactly where everyone should be. And now uh, a text from Greg Plummer just came into my phone, and uh, 
he said uh, you should be a permanent broadcaster. Wow, it's it's Greg, Greg is my friend. Greg is my friend. You know, he <laughs> he may he may just kind of you know being on my side. You know, I'm not that good at it. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yes, uh, and he also said that you could take my job. Uh, so uh, <laughs> does that mean I get to take your job? No, I don't think you can do my job. Oh come on! You know, I don't think you can do my job, man. I'm. I've been, I've been in it for a while, and I don't think you, you have the physical when you uh, <laughs> Oh, Antonio. And a traveling violation as he picks up his left pivot foot. But the storm so far, they've been pretty good keeping control of the ball. The Miracles have struggled. And here comes Oliver McNally, former storm player, along with Adrian Moss. Talk about Adrian for a minute, because... He, he's such a dynamite scorer. He, he's almost the opposite type of player of you because you're the pass first, get your teammates involved, 12 assists. He'll go for the points. So how do you guys complement each other so well? We do well because Adrian, is, like you said, he's a point guard, but he's a scoring guard as well. I'm strictly like a, a number one. I'm a strictly point guard. He can, uh, he can play combo. You know, um, him out there with me, you know, he look for uh, scoring more. And uh, yep. if he's out there, you know, without me, he, he, he looked to play the point, point position a little more. And what a play there. Oh, Curry finds it. Yes, that was Ballard cutting underneath. And oh, Curry, what a passer. Oh, Curry's been playing so well for the Storm to start this one. McNally picks up his dribble. As you can see on the replay here, what a find to Ballard. And we'll have Stewart for about 30 more seconds here in the broadcast booth. So, uh, Al, can you just uh, say a few more words to the fans here just uh, before we check you off? And uh, just uh, everyone watching back in Summerside across across Canada, across the world, and obviously in your hometown of Chicago, you have a lot of fans there. Um, yeah, I just want to, you know, thank everybody for, you know, supporting me um, and, and the Storm, Storm organization as well. Um, even though I'm not out there, I, I would still like everybody to, you know, still stay tuned in and, you know, and uh, I'll keep you updated with my with my little slight injury here going on, but I just love the support like, from the fans all over the world that support me and the fans. I mean, me and the uh, fans. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Al, for joining us, and we're going to let you hobble back down. Right now, he's a little slow, but hopefully in a few weeks he'll be good to go again. So we'll let you get back down to the bench and enjoy the rest of this game from there. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, well, that was Al Stewart who joined us on the mic. And foul was Cordell Jonte. Checking in will be Phil Jones. Jones, 6 foot 11. Really, he's done a good job of matching up with Brandon Webster. Ever since he's checked in, Webster's been off of his game. He scored four early points. But Jones was able to deter that a little bit. The missed free throw as Moncton finds himself down by seven with two minutes and 46 seconds to go. Here in the second quarter at East Link Center, I'm Brett Poirier. You can follow me on Twitter at Brett Poe. Here's Moss. Guarded by McNally, a bit of a height difference, but Moss is able to play it so well, and he scores there with a left-handed hook. Moss has an, a neat ability to use the glass, one of the best in the league, especially at the point guard position, for use in the glass. Now here's McNally. McNally still has three points, shooting one of three. Right now, the leading score for Moncton, Stanley Robinson, who has ten, shooting three of five from the, pardon me, four of seven from the field. Main will inbound the ball here. And a little bit of a hold up right now. And I guess we're going to be good to go. With 13 on the clock. Moncton has it trying to get it down low to Webster. They do find Webster. Coming over with the double team, Moss. And with 4 on the clock, a pretty fine from McNally underneath. And here's Jones running up court, finding Ballard who gets by McNally and scores. Ballard in transition, like Al said, he, one of the most dynamic players in the league. Now McNally, he scoops it by and he has five now. We're not seeing a major offensive explosion from either team right now. Both teams trading buckets at a moderately slow rate. The Storm who had a big first quarter, slowing it down. There's Adrian Moss. 
This team now with 46 points. Moncton at 36. Minute 30 to go here. Like now he gets it to Webster. Webster way off the mark. And alley oop attempt, no good. Ballard gets the steal, and he'll find O'Corey, who's running up court. Trying to get it to Ballard, but it goes off of McNally, who's down right now. He'll take a minute to get up. And that's going to lead to a timeout. We'll be right back. Speaking of merch, who wants some Island Storm swag for free? I think I was seeing some people making some noise over here in section number six. Right there? Okay, let's see if I can do this. You ready? Okay, now over here. Let's see. 21, 20. Some Moncton Miracle fans, you guys got uh, terrible t-shirts on. You want a Storm shirt? Yeah, that, that makes things much better, right? Down here, Section 20. Oh, you got some stuff. Come on now. Section 20. East Link Center. Let's hear you make some noise. Back here for the action. The Storm find themselves up by 10 right now. They've had control all game. Trying to get it to Phil Jones. No good from McCurry. But O'Curry, he fights back and almost lands in the crowd. And a great effort from O'Curry to slip the ball out of Moncton's hands. And we're going to have another timeout on the court. We'll be right back. With a minute and six seconds to go here in the second quarter, Moncton has possession. They can go three for two right now. If they play the clock right, here's Webster. Turn around, hook shot. You're going to say a push and foul is going to go against Jones. He puts his hand up in recognition.
Webster step into the line. He has four points. Two of five shooting from the field. And he misses that first free throw. Webster's played in nine games, started nine games for Blompton, played in 11, averaging seven points per game. Here's a quarry now to Ballard. And Ballard, he gets an open, and he's going to go in hard, and he traveled. Four seconds left here in the second quarter. McNally goes in, but the offensive putback. And now we have another timeout. That's three in the last minute. We'll be right back. Hey, Star fans, don't forget to turn to halftime. Here's what we got in store for you. We have the Storm Chasers. They're going to put on a little bit of show for us. Also, the uh, Passion Elite Prince Rhode Island Only Competitive Chilling Club. You guys are ready down there, right? Yeah, they're going to be here during halftime. Let's go down here. Section A, do you want some swag? Put it down here. Down here. Section 18, you guys were pretty good last time. Section 18, how far up should I go? Easily set over here. I'm going to watch each section to see who's going to be the loudest here tonight. Section 21, show people up. Make some noise. Section 20, your turn. Section 19. Section 18. 17. Down here. Section 8. Section 7. Section 6. Fuck. Everybody court side, make some noise. And the Storm have 26 seconds now, about a four-second shot clock, game clock differential. Sean Van Zandt up top with McNally guarding him. Here's O'Quarry. Back to Van Zandt, seven on the shot clock. And they're going to go for one last shot and a foul of pretty public. The official's going to wave it off. He's going to say it's a foul on the floor. And Coach Salerno is furious right now. He's yelling from midcourt. He's saying continuation should be called. Now the officials telling Salerno to be quiet. Anything to avoid a technical at this point would be good, I guess. Now Salerno walks back to the bench. That's just off of camera. Now the Storm have four seconds to get their shot. And there's Phil Jones, his shot just barely off, fighting for the loose ball. And with one second, that's going to end the first half. The score is 46 to 39. And we have a great halftime show. It's going to be a cheerleading act, so make sure you catch that. And I'll be back to start the third. Gentlemen, please welcome your Storm Chasers dance team.
Storm Chasers Dance Team, brought to you by Dance Virtuosa and choreographed by Kashina Bartlett. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for the people that purchase tunies from the Canadian Cancer Society, Prince Edward Island Division, we'd ask you now to go down to the uh, south end of the arena, the uh, south end on the floor, and that would be to my right. So all tunie tossers for later on here in the halftime, we would ask you to make your way now down to the right, to my right, down to the south side of the arena. All right, you see some mats being rolled out, and as well, some very colorful outfits on the floor as well. In just a few moments, we're going to uh, be entertained by the Passion Elite, Prince Edward Island's only competitive cheerleading club. And this is their ninth season. The club has athletes ranging in age from 4 to 17 who are from all areas of Prince Edward Island. They practice in Charlottetown. Athletes travel throughout the Maritimes each year, ending their season with the Canadian Nationals in Ontario. This year, the senior team, who will be performing for you today, will be traveling to Boston to compete at Jamfest Nationals. All right, the 50-50 pot now is at $735, so you might want to think about picking up a 50-50 ticket. And they're on sale at the stationary areas by the gates. Ladies and gentlemen, the Passion Elite Competitive Cheerleading Club. Ladies and gentlemen, the Passion Elite Competitive Cheerleading Club. It's their ninth season. And the senior team will be performing in Boston as they compete at Jam Fest Nationals. All right, we're getting ready for our duty toss, and that's going to happen down in the section where the mats are being rolled up. That is the south end. All right.
everybody down to the end line. You can move up to, up to here if you want. Last chance to toss your tuning.
for purchasing your tickets for the Judy Chops. I don't say a word. I don't say a word with some of my and I got but I deserve it.
We're back in Charlottetown to start the third quarter. Matinee game began at 2 o'clock local time here in Charlottetown. And the Storm find themselves up on top, 46-39, coming out of halftime. Adrian Moss starts off the half hot. And to recap the first half, the Storm really took advantage of the Moncton rust early on in this one, scoring 27 first quarter points. And then it began to slow down a little bit offensively for them. They finished the halftime with 48 points. So... They did slow down a little bit offensively, but now they should be back on track because both teams are on even playing field right now, and there should be a lot of running gun expected. These are two top scoring teams. Here's Johnny Main, who had a bit of an ankle issue in the first quarter. Looked like he actually might have twisted or sprained it, but he was fortunate enough to walk off, and he's continuing to play, so uh, it must not be that serious. Very good sign for Moncton. Obviously, he's so important to them. He's the fifth leading scorer in the league at 20.12 per game. And a long bomb pass to Chang and gets tipped away. Storm will retain possession. And looking at some first-half numbers, leading the way offensively was Robinson for Moncton with 10, and Ballard for the Storm with 10. Adrian Moss did a terrific job getting other guys involved. He had 8 assists, and he's starting to play like an Al Stewart would play. And I want to thank Al Stewart for joining us in the second quarter. He injured himself in a game on Friday against St. John. Goes for an MRI tomorrow to figure out what exactly happened. And trying to draw a charge was Ballard. No luck, and the offensive putback goes from Moncton. That's Jermaine Daly got his fingertips on it. And now Moss, his three off the mark. Johnny Main, they're going to say a bad screen was set. So it will be an offensive foul. Points in the paint. Moncton starting to pick up in that category. They now have 26 points in the paint. Storm with 22. Points off turnover. Storm still leading with 16. Moncton has 11. Ed Jones fighting for the loose ball. He finds Ballard, but that just trickles out of bounds. And Moncton will get the ball back. Score 50-41. to 41. Storm on top. Crowd chant and defense here. A little bit of energy in the building. The second quarter was quite dry. A lot of timeouts, a lot of stoppage of play. Now with six on the clock, Maine has to do something. He's going to force up a quick three. Not that time. Inbound, and there's McNally. Working some handoff, and another bad screen is called. That's going to go against Brandon Webster, so he'll be ticketed with that foul. Well, a nine-point advantage for the home team. They've done a good job controlling Moncton the first two minutes of this quarter. The Storm generally struggle to open up the third quarter, sometimes to close out the second, so it's very important to do that better. And so far this afternoon, they've done that, and there's going to be a foul called against Moncton. Steve Changang will go to the line. Steve Changang, a late addition to this team, came in November, later November, he came in. Antoine Tisby left, he came in. And really, he's filled that role beautifully. Tisby's such a strong body. He plays about 20 minutes a game, but he, it's just his ability to interfere with the other team, their constant mindset. If I dribble in, Antoine Tisby's going to be there to meet me. So Chang Gang's almost starting to build that same type of, of appearance around the league. People will recognize him as a shot blocker, as a tough defender. So it will interfere with, with the other players' mindsets, and that's what you want. And now you can see Chang Gang mixing it up right now with Webster. 
You'll love to see that. Nice job driving down lane. That was Jermaine Daly. And Chang Gang and Webster mix up in the backcourt. And they'll run into the play in just a minute. Here's Moss. Finds Ballard, who's going to take the three, and he's going to miss that time. Offensive rebound comes down to Chang Yang, and now it's Jones who pump fakes, gets into the lane, and he misses. Both teams struggling offensively to get a shot going, although you can attribute it to good defense, which both teams are playing right now. McNally, he's hit. As he runs baseline, a foul is going to be charged to a Corey. McNally will amount. He has five points on two of six shooting. Only player we haven't seen is Matt Robertson. Usually a 10th, 11th man on this Moncton roster. Comes in. He's able to shoot, though. Very similar to Doug McKinney on the Storm. Now Okori spots up for three, and he misses that time. Offensive rebound by the five foot eight Adrian Moss. He's got a knack for rebounding. It's really incredible for his size. It's not necessarily he's soaring up there, and there he is. Look at this. What up? And he gets the friendly roll. Would you believe that? Adrian Moss now has nine points go along with nine assists. So he's looking at a double-double. And it's th the, I, I guess it was a deep two, just on the line. That was good for Daly. And running long court, Antonio Ballard, he's going to be charged with a foul as he comes down and grabs the wrist of a Moncton Miracles player on his rebound. Sean Van Zandt will check in, replacing O'Quarry, who will get a breather. With eight minutes to go here in the third quarter, 54-45. And from the exact same spot as last time, Daly couldn't connect that time, though. Here's Chang Yang up top. Like Stewart said at the second quarter, Chang Yang can actually spot up and hit a three and a turnover there for Moss. And it, as McNally's entry pass was taken away, Moss is going to step into the three and he hits it. Yes, that's a three. And Moss on fire here in the third quarter. Now it's 12. Tying Antonio Ballard for the lead in scores on the storm. I'm starting to get a little louder here at East Lane. Crowd chant and defense. As Maine was almost stripped of the ball. Having trouble gaining possession. And a, they're going to say an offensive foul on a clear out. As Oliver McNally used his left elbow to get rid of Adrian Moss. Right before the shot clock expired. Dwayne Smith will check in for the Storm. Two points, one of three shooting. Quiet start to the game for him. See what he can do in this third quarter. He's a big part of the Storm bench. He and Williams, it's really nice to have that spark coming off. And a loose ball here. Smith picks it up with eight on the shot clock. Moss going to try his third three in the quarter. Not that one. Bit of a heat check moment for him there. This place would have went bananas if he would have drilled that one. And the alley-oop finish with the soft finger roll is good for Daly. Both teams trade in buckets. This is good for the Storm, but it wouldn't be good for the Miracles right now because of the situation they're in down by double digits right now. 
they have to figure out a way to stop the storm from scoring, and that's going to be an. Oh, they're going to wave that off. Moncton's begging for continuation, not luck. And I don't know about that call. I think Moncton might have actually been robbed of a continuation play, as the storm were in the first half. And here you can see here the foul and the shot. That actually should have been a continuation call. That was a mistake on part of the officials there. There's Lathan now. He's partially blocked by Chang Gang and Moncton with 11 on the shot clock. And we're going to have a timeout here on the court. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Your Storm Chasers dance team. Back here in the third quarter in Charlottetown at East Link Center. Storm are on top in this matinee game so far. Five seconds on the clock. Two seconds they have to shoot. Moncton fires up a three. No good. Now here's Antoine. His pocket's picked. And trying to get it to someone, he finally finds Van Sant, And now Van Sant gets his pocket picked too. Now Lathan, he gets it into the midcourt. And Moncton does score. What a sequence for them. Salerno in the ear of an official right now saying his guys were fouled along with coach Mike Leslie looking for a call. Here's Van Zant. Ballard, he's going inside and he's partially blocked. No call on that. Smith recovers and he'll reset it. But there's no shot clock reset. They have to shoot very quick here with one second in. It's going to be a shot clock violation for the Storm. A few sloppy possessions now in a row for the Storm. Here's Maine now. He's fouled, he'll shoot two. Start foul number one, Sean Van Zandt. That'll be a second, that's the team's fourth. On the foul line to shoot here. Come on to number 23, Johnny Maine. 
Wade shoots 83% from the line. Out of 136 attempts this year, he's made 113 of those. And now the officials are discussing something under the basket. Now that they're talking about possible technicals that could be awarded to either coach if they continue to yell at the officials. That usually is the topic of discussion at least. And this is definitely newer to Prince Edward Island basketball fans. You don't normally see the officials get in yelled at as consistently in minor basketball, which has always been Prince Edward Island's best basketball. But in the professional level, you do see coaches constantly in the air of an official. Sean Van Zant to Antoine in the corner, and he hits it. Now, Maine, he's double teamed in the corner and a foul, a late call. Sean Van Zandt, he goes to the floor hard. He's holding on to his face. Looks like he might have got an inverted poke to the eye. He's slow to get up, but he does. We'll see if he remains in the game. And that was strange. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but Antonio Ballard looks like he found an iPod on the floor, landed over to the storm bench. It looks like it might have actually fell out of his jersey. Might have forgot he had it on from the warm-ups. Don't see that every day. <laughs> Main hits those free throws and brings this game within seven. Four minutes to go here in the third quarter. The Storm have held the lead the entire game. But Moncton, they've been chipping away at it in this third. Here's Antoine now. Tries to find Ballard. He's triple teamed down there with five on the clock. Getting it up. Just a, a prayer. What a shot from Antoine. Completely in traffic. Just threw it up. And a good screen there on the back of Antoine. That screen set by Daly. Able to free up his point guard as Lathan now with Ballard on him. And he curls underneath and a turnover there. Storm running with numbers. It gets poked away from behind though. And now Moncton has possession here. Three on two for them. And stripped away another foul. Jones checking back in. At the line from Moncton, Stanley Robinson. And his first free throw comes up short. Stanley Robinson, the third lead in scorer on the Miracles team. He started 20 games, averages 15 points per game. Alex Jarosh will be checking in. This is Jarosh's first minutes in this game. Pardon me, no, it's Matt Robertson, not Alex Jarosh, who hasn't played. So the only miracle we haven't seen is Matt Robertson in this game. We've also yet to see Doug McKinney for the Storm. And now Lathan, he loses the handle. And Antoine's going to off to slow things down. And the Stormer in a slump right now. And you'd think a player like Greg Plummer, who was traded last week, would be a nice, nice piece to have right now. Plummer, one of the most deadly shooters the Storm has ever seen, comes to mind with Brandon Robinson also. Wishing Greg all the best with the power. Nick Okori has struggled in the third, only played a few minutes. He's sitting on the bench, and really the Stormer just in an offensive slope. I guess both teams are for that matter. Very low score, and it looked like the pace was going to be a, a burn burner, at least 20, 20 points. 
early on in the first eight minutes, I believe, for the storm was what it was. And then ever since, uh, it's, it's gone cold. The shot there is missed by Van Sand. Jones gets the board, kicks it to Antoine, who's going to step into a wide-open three, and that's short. The miss there. DeRosh couldn't connect. And here we go. Doug McKinney will check in for the storm. The building could definitely use some life. That should do it. Lathon shot is missed. And the storm running back. Van Zandt leading the way. Antoine was open. He's going to set up a play instead. He's looking at Antonio Ballard right now. And Ballard's trying to post up. He's got a mismatch on him. DeRosh guarding him. What a find underneath to Smith. Up top, wow, way off the mark. Sylvania Watkins, who's not a three-point shooter whatsoever, tried his hand at one. And here's Doug McKinney now checking in. He's a nice offensive spur. Defensively, he sometimes gets a little behind the play and struggles on that end. But offensively, he's he's quite good. And now McKinney, he tries a three, and that's off the mark. And now the Storm with a reset shot clock. Antoine with Smith. Now Smith pump fakes, gets inside. And swinging around the perimeter, here's the storm and a turnover there, a no call, and a few rough plays, and a late whistle is going to be called. Salerno is furious, and so is Coach Chuax with Moncton. Storm foul is on number 33, Dwayne Smith. Not exactly sure what happened there. It looks like there was a few fouls in the backcourt, and then there was obviously one in the midcourt. You can see right here, Van Zant goes in. Looks like he got stripped there, and that's obviously a foul by Antoine as the miracle player stood on the ground. And then in the front court, it was DeRosh who was fouled and went to the line. So a few no calls there, surprisingly, that, that went on called. Sixty-four, fifty-six is the score. We're under the final minute to go. Doug McKinney, he was so close to taking that three, almost left his fingertips. And they're going to say an offensive foul against Antoine. Cordell Gente checked it in. Gente wears number 30 for the Miracles. I remember watching him play years ago. In college ball, of course. Now, here's Gente. McKinney with good defense that time. Standing his ground, but it does lead to a basket. That time, George connects. And the Storm have only registered 18 points in this quarter. Miracles only with 19, though. Very low scoring. And here's the Miracles running again. But it's after the buzzer. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. We're going to come back. 64 to 58 is the score. I need somebody. I need you to raise your hand. Hey, Doug. I need somebody to raise their hand that is from Stratford. From Stratford. Who's from Stratford? Come on down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Either that or you get to nominate somebody. No, it's all you. Come on, you're part of the Shura BMR fan of the game. We have a bedroom set courtesy of Shura BMR. It's the Storm Scavenger Hunt. Those aren't yours yet. Give those back. There's four items, and you need the crowd to help you find those, okay? So yell them out. What's the first item that you need? Storm program. Who has the storm program for him? Quick. Go grab it. you got to go grab it. You're wasting time. What's the second item? Uh, blue 
Blackberry smartphone. A Blackberry smartphone. Somebody yell out if they have a Blackberry This is cheating. Number three. Brown shoes. Who has brown shoes? Go touch them. Go touch them. Or take it. Even better. That's yours now. What's the fourth item? Someone shorter than you. Someone shorter than you. The shorter friend that's good for something. What's your name? Brett Wood. You got yourself the Sherwood BMR fan of the game. A bedroom set courtesy of Sherwood BMR, the inspiration boutique. No, all those prizes are yours. You got a cell phone, too. You got brown shoes. And you got all this stuff. Congratulations. Something else I want you to do, Storm Pants. Paul and Skierman, I'm going to need your help for one thing. All right, go ahead. Pretend I'm shooting a three-pointer, okay? Okay. Matt, four, three. So when he announced the three-pointer for the storm, I need everybody to pull out a little Ric Flair and go, woo! One more. One more, Paul. Matt, four, three. Every time the storm's in three points, I want to hear. Yeah, that's what we want. Here to start the fourth quarter in Charlottetown, a matinee game between the Island Storm and Moncton Miracles. It was a bit of a burn burner early on, but now both teams have locked in on defense and the offense has really turned off. 64 58 is the score. The Storm are on a one game win streak after a great win over St. John on Friday night. Before that, they were in the swamp. And oh, Corey now. Quiet third quarter. Nice to see him getting going in the fourth. On the court for the Storm. Moss, McKinney, Ed Jones, Williams, and O'Corey. That's going to be a whistle there. Will be a foul, but I, and it will lead to free throws. On the court for the Miracles, Travis George along with Cordell Gente, DeRoche, Daly, and Watkins. Pardon me, not Daly, it is Lathan on the court. And there's Moth going in to give instructions to Williams. Williams, who's going to try and box out for the rebound. And it goes to Moncton Watkins, padding his stats with that offensive board. McKinney guarded him, and the nice find underneath, and a foul. The Miracles with a huge break there, and now this game is getting a little closer again. It's in, within six now, could be five. Storm foul number three, Adrian Moss, number is fourth. That's the team's second. And the three-point play is completed. Here's Moss to Jones. Jones, very good first half, connected on several threes. And here comes Jones, slide in. He almost lost the handle, gets it to McKinney, who spots up. His shot's just off the mark. McKinney now 0 of 2. Now in the corner, wide open, 4-3, no good that time for Moncton, and Okori runs up the court with it. Some hang time from him, and it goes. Nick Okori embracing his role as a storm player well. He's, a, he's not necessarily a true point guard, but he's playing some point right now, I guess. He and Moss kind of alternate that position along with Sean Vansant and Al Stewart, who's injured right now. Mid-range jumper goes there for Jonte. McKinney coming for the screen. Moss clears it, and he finds a wide open Ed Jones, but he couldn't connect that. Now Jones tracks down his own rebound, and he tries a little hang time scoop shot. And that couldn't go. And with a jumper, Moncton's really 
putting the storm to work right now. Lathan connects on that one, and it is now a three-point game, 68-65, and the storm call time is. It's time to find out who the lady of the game is for Trace or Paris at Bernadette's Flowers, and we're in section 21. Oh, my gosh, there's lots of ladies. Penny, Penny Simpson, come here for a second. I got something for you. You are the lady of the game. You've got yourself some beautiful flowers from Bernadette's Flowers and also a great gift from Trace or Paris. Everybody 21, show some love for Penny. Congratulations. What's going on, Paul? All right, where's, where's Stormy? All right, Stormy. Come on out on the court. Stormy is bringing out a, well, it's a neat window. And what it does, it reminds us that it's time for the Sherwood BMR winter window booking sale. Now, it's on right now at Sherwood BMR. So if you're building a new home or looking for new windows for your existing home, visit Sherwood BMR now and order your windows for spring delivery. How about that? That's it. Don't drop it, Stormy. I'm telling you, you drop it, it's yours. All right, it's the winter window booking sale on now at Sherwood BMR. On that last play, a technical foul on Moncton's number 34, Travis George. That's his third. And on the play before the timeout, a technical foul was called against Moncton. It will go against Travis George. Coach Truax opting to keep him in the game right now. Nico Corey takes the shots. He hits both of the technical free throws. Storm up by five right now, and Moss taking it up the court. Up top, Williams. Nice find inside. And O'Corey can and connect. Looking for the foul call. Moncton has not had the lead all afternoon. And they're looking for it now, down by five. And a reach-in foul is going to be called as Changing a little too aggressive on the inside pass. Changing now with his fourth foul. He's going to watch out. Two more will put him out of this game. Storm with three fouls. Moncton with one foul. So the Miracles are in a good position now to be able to play very aggressive basketball. Not have to worry about the foul situation. Durant connects on the jumper. Here's Chang Yang up top. He's dribbling around a bit, hands it off to Okori. He floats in and he scores with a right handed shot. Okori now has 15 in this one. On 6 of 13 shooting. And now, Doug McKinney will check back in for the storm. Coach Salerno definitely looking to get the crowd more involved in this game. A basket from McKinney usually does that. McKinney, a three-point sharpshooter. One of the best percentages in the league, as a matter of fact. Now here is George up top, back to Lathan with 12. He turns around, Moss was in his face, and he hits it. And Moss shrugs at himself right now. He's mad, couldn't do anything. That was terrific defense on his part.
Moss dribbles around the timeline, and he heaves up a shot. No good. The offensive rebound in a crowd. What an effort from Jones. Four guys surrounded him, but he still managed to get it up. He'll go to the line. Ed Jones playing a respectable game right now. He's got nine points. He's already hit three from beyond the arc. And now that's going to be his first point that wasn't a three-pointer. And there he goes. He now has 11, and the Storm are up 74-69. 7.47 to go in the game. And Antonio Ballard checked back in, and I would suspect we will see Ballard the rest of the way. And there's Watkins underneath. O'Curry and Watkins, they, they hit up in the backcourt. And O'Curry looks to be a little angry right there as Watkins slams into him. So we'll keep an eye on that to see if that develops into anything else. And in a crowd, Jones, he was trapped. And the baseline official says that it was off of the hand of Jones. He disagrees. Here's Lathan. We haven't seen McNally in several minutes. Lathan taking over the point guard duties. Down low to Watkins. He turns around and he hits it. Now a one point game, 74 73. Okori up top. Darash on him and he is hit hard. And of course, going to add on to his point total. He'll go to the line for two. And the importance of this game for both teams is huge. The Storm and the Miracles are probably going to be the two fighting for playoff position. And now being restrained by teammates, that's Sylvania Watkins, who is furious right now. I think he and Moss may be talking a little bit. And Watkins is going to be pushed back to the Moncton bench. And this is not the first time we've seen Watkins lose his cool while playing this team. I remember one game last year, may have been the year before. I, no, I believe it was last year where Watkins completely lost his cool, had to be restrained by three or four, four teammates. And then after the game, he was still pretty irate. I could hear him in the hallways around the locker room area, so we'll see how long he steps out of the game because he's such a valuable piece for Moncton. O'Corey hitting those free throws. Storm now up by three. Like I said, though, the importance of this game. Storm are at 12 and 13. Moncton at 9 and 17. So really, if you think about it, not too far behind. In a crowd, getting up the shot. Not that time. And a jump ball will be called. And I believe jumping will be Travis George. Actually, no, sorry, that's my NBA rules kicking in. It's just possession. Storm will get possession. Williams checking back in. He's been quiet all afternoon. Only has three points. Oh, Corey, he takes a contested three and he hits it. Now Lathan. His shot's tipped. Should say his pass tipped. Moncton will take the ball on the baseline. And now wide open Darage. A breakdown for the Storm and they get lucky. But the offensive rebound tracked down by Jonte. Darage now has it. Squirts out of his hands. Storm running with numbers. And kicked back. Oh, what a jump! My goodness. And he slams it down. Oh, that's Jeremy Williams. The emphatic slam. And look at this. Are you kidding me? He just soars up above everyone from beyond the restricted line. And he slams it down. And the Storm bench jumps up moments after. 
And on the other end of this play, it's going to be a foul against Jeremy Williams. That'll put Jonte to the line. That right there is the dunk of the game. One of the best I've seen this year. In traffic, too. Didn't seem to be bothered by it at all. Monkton's top scorer, Johnny Main checks back in. He'll be valuable going forward. And a nice find, Antonio Ballard underneath. Storm back up by nine, 83-74. And Monkton cut in underneath, and a basket there for Jonte. Williams in traffic, he's hacked. And the officials are going to say it's a shooting foul. Good to see Williams starting to get involved. He averages about eight points a game. This is his 13th game with the Storm. He started seven of them. And Williams, such a nice find by Coach Salerno, able to bring him in, part of that London Lightning Championship team. So he's coached very well under Michael Ray Richardson, knows how to win along with Adrian Moss and Antoine, who are all part of that championship squad. And now, we knew this would come, Salvania Watkins, who was hot just two minutes ago, checked back into the game. Coach Salerno ordering out defensive matchups to his guys. And there's Maine. He frees up and hits it. He'll hit that all day. Now Corey dribbling around with it. Wide open Jones. He's hit those earlier in the game. Not this time, though. That would have been huge for the Storm. Would have put them up by 10 again. Four minutes and 24 seconds to go. They are up by seven right now. And another foul. Storm are well into the bonus situation. Storm foul number 15. And Jones, that will be his And Moncton has to be pleased with the minutes Jonte's providing. Not known as a prominent scorer in the league, but he's actually putting up a good amount of points. He's got 10 now. On 3 of 5 shooting. Here's Moss to Corey, and they're the two point guards going ahead in this game, I would imagine. Shot way off the mark for a Corey. That was a deep three. Maybe a little too far. So you have Moss that will technically be the ball handler. O'Corey will play shooting guard. Now Lathan hands it off. And a steal there at midcourt. And the quickest guy in the league, Adrian Moss, goes in with it. Adrian Moss, some of the quickest hands and obviously the quickest feet. He's so, so hard to deal with, especially when he's running up court. Now Jeremy Williams runs up court, finds Ballard, but he couldn't connect. Goes right through Ballard's hands, and now Monkton the other way. Watkins with it. He's fouled and won. Just like that, a potential five-point swing. Storm were about to score. Ballard couldn't connect, and just the other way, Monkton goes for the possible and one opportunity. Here's the number it is. Zero. If you have that number, take it to fans. 
services. And this looks like it will be the Storm lineup to close out this game. You have Moss, Okori, Smith, Williams, and Ballard for Moncton. There's Watkins on the court who's taking those free throws. And he misses that one. And traffic. Connor trying to come down with it. It's going to be a jump ball call. Williams couldn't strip it away from Watkins, it was. And Watkins holding on to his hand right now. Looks like it might, his fingers might have got twisted up in the fight for the ball. Also on the court for Moncton. Just checked back in. McNally Robinson. There's McNally up top with Lathan. And now posting up, there's Jonte. And his shot just pops out. Ballard comes down with the rebound. And he's going to slow things down and let his point guard, Adrian Moss, run the play. Five-point game. Just under three minutes of play in NBL matinee action here at Eastlink Center in Charlottetown. Back the other way. Turning around Robinson. That's short. And going into the crowd. A few fans got what their money's worth there. Wow, my goodness. So it looks like Lathan runs into two people and Moss ran into one person. Looks like everyone's going to be okay. Probably a few spilled drinks, though. Now, Coach Mike Leslie, he's stopping the play, saying there's a shot clock error. They gave Moncton extra time. So Moncton will have 13 seconds on the clock. Watkins, he fires one up quick, and it's a turnover. Coach Truax puts his hands up in disbelief. This team just can't catch a break today. They've not been able to get the lead at any point in this game. And there's another foul. Both teams are now in the penalty. Oh, Corey, step into the line. Corey in his third game with the Storm. Pardon me, his fourth game with the Storm. He started three of those games. And as a member of this team, he's averaging 13.8 points per game, shooting 85% at the line, 28% from three. His field goal percentage, it's been a little down around 35%. But free throw shooting, he's one of the best in the league at it. And crowd chance defense here as we approach the two minute mark. Here's Watkins, he goes in hard and a foul. And it's going to lead to more shots as the Storm and the Miracles are both in the penalty. Nine points in this game. Only six rebounds. That's low for him. Leading Moncton in rebounding. It's seven. It's seven. George has seven. And uh, Smith has seven for the Storm. Leading scorer in this game. It's O'Corey who's handling the ball right now. He has 22. Antonio Ballard, the long two, no good. I didn't really like that shot. Not much offense, no flow to it. Just stepped into it. Have to see what the Storm can do on their next possession, but they have to stop here. And there's a mismatch for Moncton. You have Johnny Main, and he's covered by Moss. 
That's about an eight inch height difference. So fortunately the Storm are able to tip it away before it gets to Maine. A one minute and 26 seconds to go. Okori for three and he hits it. And that could be the nail in the coffin. The Storm are now up by nine, 92 to 83. Here's Lathan. They have to hurry. That shot's no good. Moss gets the board. Moss, a phenomenal game. He's got 11 assists in this one. Also with 13 points, two rebounds. Now he breaks by the defense. His lay-in is no good. And now McNally, he's going to hurry past the timeline. They're going to have to shoot a three, and they do. And it's no good. Adrian Moss, he dives to the floor to save that possession with 48 seconds left. An offensive foul will be called. Coach Salerno telling O'Corey to slow things down. They're in a good position right now to win this game. Up by nine with 46 seconds left in the game. Stick around for the finish. As a sticker for Brookvale Provincial Ski Park, you're getting yourself some swag courtesy of Brookvale Provincial Ski Park. So make sure you check your program right now. If you're holding on to it, if you have that stickered program, make your way to Fan Services. Hi, Fan Services. They're down there. You can get yourself some cool stuff courtesy of Brookvale Provincial Ski Park. 46 to go, Storm fans. Let's hear you make some noise. Now here we go, about 45 seconds to go here. Moncton is down by nine. You have to wonder what they are going to try and do, but it's a turnover there. Smith running the corner, and he slams it. This place is rocking. East Link Center on their feet, now up by 11, and they have to hurry. Moncton, if they have any hope, what a slam. The other way, Lathan. But O'Corey, he's going to try and dribble it out as long as possible and tie it up. O'Corey will go to the line. Thirty-five seconds left on the clock, and look at that slam, just phenomenal. And then right back the other way, Lathan did pretty much the same thing, maybe even better. Oh, Corey, he's been hot tonight at the free throw line. The leading scorer for the Storm now is twenty-three. And Moncton, they've just never really been able to take any type of momentum swing in this game. Constantly found themselves down. They're going to call a timeout. And they have a lot of ground to make up with only 35 seconds to go. And they find themselves down by 11. We'll be right back.
And here we go in the fourth quarter. 35 seconds left. Storm up 11. Mufton with possession, and they have to shoot a three. You'd have to think that's what their game plan is right now. Here's Lathan. He's actually going to take it inside. McNally taking it inside. Not exactly the way you want to play in this situation. And now Smith, he's fouled as he gets the rebound, and that's probably going to do it after these free throws. Looks like the Storm are going to cruise to a win here and prove their record the 13-13. and 13. Just a reminder, Al Stewart, team captain, starting point guard, goes for an MRI tomorrow to figure out exactly what happened. We believe it is some type of MCL injury. We're hoping it's just a sprain. Of course, we fear the worst that it could be a tear, which would require surgery. So we're hoping, praying, just every fan here in Charlottetown, they, they want their star point guard. So best wishes to Al tomorrow as he examines exactly what happened. And the storm will cruise to victory unless Moncton has some type of crazy comeback left in them. It doesn't look like they do after the missed three. And the Storm are going to dribble it out with 14 seconds. And it looks like the final score will be 97 to 85. And the crowd coming to their feet here at East Link Center. I want to thank everyone for joining me today for some Sunday NBA Imaginary action. I'm Brett Perry. Have yourselves a great rest of the weekend.